The broader non-physical part of you is one who knows your worthiness. When you feel unworthy, you're not practicing the art of allowing. Here's an opportunity to begin to understand another basic flawed premise of your society. What's up guys, Namo Amalea. Stefan Peel from Shared Reality here to help you make your life a little more enjoyable and a little more meaningful. And today I'm gonna to do that by taking you through Abraham's 22 flawed premises. Don't be turned off by the number. I'm gonna break it down into a separate video so you don't have to sit through one super long one. Now for those who don't know, Abraham is the name for the collective consciousness. It's kind of a non-physical entity from a higher dimension that was first channeled by Esther Hicks in 1986. Esther Hicks was then a spiritual seeker, now a spiritual teacher, and has channeled Abraham for over two decades, um, enlightening people around the world uh, about universal laws, law of attraction specifically, and how to really move into that abundance and become the full, totally open, totally allowing energy of the creator that we truly are. Now they outline these 22 flawed premises that we have here in this physical reality um, in the book The Vortex. And I'm going to take you through just the first four of these 22 premises today. So number one is I am either physical or non-physical, either dead or alive. And the flaw in this premise is the dualistic thinking. We know that things are all one energy. It all moves through the same life force it is moving through source energy, it's moving through you, it's moving through me, it's moving through every single person, every living thing on this planet. We are not a soul trapped within a body. We're a body living within this expansive soul. So we are both our higher self, source energy, and our physical bodies. We're not either or. You know, law of attraction we always want both and thinking not either or because it doesn't have to be a one or the other so number two is about parents but it can really be applied to any authority figure that's trying to exercise control over your life and that flawed premise is that my parents because they were here long before i was born and because they're my parents know better than i do what is right for me now you did not come on to this planet did not manifest in this physical reality to carry out anyone else's will other than your own. You know, when it feels bad to be discordant with your parents, when you're fighting and you're clashing and you want different things, it feels badly because you're misaligned with your true intention. You know, you could be doing all these things to try and please them, to try and live up to their expectation, to try and live a life that fits within their standards of what they think is right and what they think success looks like. You feel miserable because you're so misaligned with your true calling, with your higher self, with that purpose, with what you know is right for you. And yes, we respect them and honor them and thank them as elders for coming before us and for teaching them what they knew and knowing that they did the best that they can with the knowledge that they have, with the level of consciousness that they have, but knowing that it's your job to grow beyond that and to not have to be restrained by that because the best thing you can do for your relationship your familial relationships as well as any relationship is to live in accordance with your highest self so know that even if you have kind of a tumultuous relationship with your parents or with some authority figure that you both did kind of choose to be in this tango because you knew it would help you grow as creators because every time you encounter something that you don't want some negative experience, you're launching a rocket of desire for the opposite. So in the parents restricting you, you then know you desire greater freedom. You know you want to treat relationships with boundaries that may feel less restrictive. You know you don't want to exercise control over anyone or have anyone exercise control over you. So this is why we have these clashes in our life to teach us what we do desire. And we knew coming into this physical reality that that would be the case. We knew that there would be such diversity of thought and such clash of opinion that we would be exposed to all these ways to expand. So every time we're exposed to a new thing, that expands our higher self, that source energy flowing through us expands. 
And if we don't embrace that and allow that expansion, that's when we start to feel the discord. We start to feel unaligned, we start to feel native. So always check in with yourself to see if what you're doing is in alignment with who you are in this moment. Because no one else can make that decision for you. No one else knows what's best for you. You know what's best for you, through and through. Flawed premise number three. And this is the one I probably see most often, at least in these top four, is if I push hard enough against unwanted things, they will go away. You see examples of this everywhere. People trying to persuade, people trying to coerce, people trying to get people under their side, rally them towards their cause, affect some change, make some influence. You know, people think, oh, if I get the schools to ban this, if I get this outlawed in my state, if I just make sure no one can say this word, no one can talk about things, if I don't have to see it, if it's out of sight, it's out of my mind, I won't have to worry about it. But this is such a flawed premise because it's the idea, well, <laughs> there are actually two very big flawed premises to that. One is the idea that anything else in your environment has an effect on how you feel. That's just not true. We think in cause and effect. We think in this physical reality, oh, this person's annoying me. Thus, now I feel badly. And if they would only change their behavior, then I wouldn't feel badly. But that's not how it works. We are responsible for our own emotions, only ourselves. We need to find out how to be peaceful, how to be loving, how to carry this compassionate, open, blissful, joyful energy in every situation and that will attract in what is meant for us. We can't change another person's behavior. The only thing you control, it can get, the only thing you can control is your own reactions and your own feelings. If people there are always gonna be people that annoy you, there are always going to be uh, clashes of opinion, there's always gonna be diversity of thought because if there wasn't, it'd be a boring ass world. And because people are such unique individuals and such unique creators and all came to create their own life in this physical manifestation, no one's ever going to agree on the same thing. The other flawed premise of this is that it tries to be exclusionary when we live in an inclusive universe. And this means you can't think your way out of things. You can't think things away from you because what you focus on expands. Where your attention goes, energy goes. And that's gonna just make it bigger and bigger. This is why we're always solution focused, not problem focused. Because you just focus on the solution, you find a solution. You focus on the problem, the problem gets bigger and bigger. And so when you're pushing against these unwanted things, you're putting all your focus, all your attention on what you don't want. And what's that do? Like attracts like. That which is onto itself is attractive, <laughs> is that the, the, the long-winded one? I never remember, it always sounds very antiquated language, but... Um, that which is likened to itself is drawn. We all know like attracts like. So if you're focused on the negativity and on these things you don't want, even if you're trying to find ways around them, push them away, it's just not gonna work because you're always gonna make that obstacle, that enemy bigger and bigger by virtue of focusing on it because we live in an inclusive universe. That means what you put energy towards is what's gonna be included in, they call it the vortex, in the book that I got these premises from, but just in your environment. What shows up in your reality is a direct result of your thoughts. So anything included in those thoughts is in some way gonna be manifested in your life, whether you want them to or not. So never focus on what you don't want. Never focus on the problem. Always stay solution focused. Remember, whatever you include in your thoughts is gonna make an appearance in your reality. And last but not least for today's premises, we're gonna go to number four. I've come here to live the right way of life and to influence others to the same right way of living. Now, spoiler alert, there is no right way of life. There just is what is. There's always light and dark, always good and evil, always these dualistic perceptions you can put on things, right or wrong. But things are always balanced. It's 
it's all one energy it's all the same energy moving through every decision moving through every parallel moving through every right and wrong every dark and light every good and evil is all the same energy so first off there is no right and wrong we need to get rid of that feeling <laughs> get rid of that dualistic judgmental thinking and secondly we are not here to control anyone else we are not here to influence them to get them to live in the way that we think is proper that we think is right we are all here to create our own unique experience we're all here to come up against discordant and diverse ideas and to grow and expand and truly be creators you know we're not discovering these same things in the past we're co-creating by respecting each other's opinions, listening to one another, and seeing what, from our commonalities, from our discussions, what new thoughts can be sparked, what new ideas can be created. You know, we're here to co-create, not to shut down others' creations so that ours can feel more peaceful. As I said before, you know, keeping control of your reactions, being aware of your emotions, and being responsible for your own vibrational frequency is your responsibility, irrespective of what's going on around you. So there's no need to influence others to some right way of living. There's no right way of living to be rewarded. There's only living that brings us closer to what we want and farther away from what we want. So you have to decide what you want, what is going to be your creation, and go after that and create it and make it happen. So guys, I hope you found that helpful. Be on the lookout for part two and all the subsequent parts coming out until we go through all 22 of these very important flawed premises things we need to break the uh, mental connection with in our mind because they are just not true and frankly they're holding you back believing in them so i really really hope you found this helpful if you learned anything at all please be sure to hit that like button and if you haven't already please hit the subscribe and do hit that little bell notification too so that turns notifications on so every time I upload a new video, you will be first to know. As I appreciate you sticking with me, I know I have not been as consistent as I would love to be, but I promise you these next parts are coming out and there is more to come from there. So thank you all. Until next time. Love you.